So I watched the first three episodes of Disney Plus's Willow follow-up series to a 1988 film. And I know what I'm going to get here. It's going to be, hey Vaughn, you can't write off a show without watching the whole season. So, so I watched a three-hour train wreck. That's not enough for you. It's quite obvious enough in the eyes of this reviewer that there is going to be no redemption for Willow. But before we get into it, I want to give a mention to my buddies Andar.com, makers of fine leather goods, including this nifty wallet that snaps on the back of your iPhone. It could make for quite a good Christmas gift. Use my promo code FRY20 to save 20% at checkout. So Willow picks up years after the original movie, which I only watched for the first time like a year ago or so, and it was fine, it was okay. It sure seemed like a story that was concluded, and I suppose that was the case for decades. But in Disney's haste to combat HBO's Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, and Amazon Prime Video's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, it seems as though Willow was that property that Disney could simply turn to. And what you actually end up with is a bunch of individuals on a very simplistic quest with action so fleeting, most of the runtime is these characters annoying your ass. So there's this long locked prince who uh, is quite the playboy, he gets captured. His insufferable lesbian princess sister is tasked with rescuing him, which the mom agrees to. By the way, the mom, she was the smoke show lady in uh, the, the original Willow, you know, gotten a little older. Uh, former lover or husband, Mad Mardigan, Val Kilmer, not here for obvious reasons. Oh, but we put this fellowship together, which includes racially ambiguous lesbian lover of the princess, her arranged marriage suitor, which by the way, if the mom is the queen, and she talks in this monologue about how, oh, well, I, I married this this uh, really repugnant guy, Mad Mardigan, but I was young, I made mistakes. How come you're arranging a marriage for your daughter when you didn't have to go through an arranged marriage? Why are we acting like we have to tell Western audiences arranged marriages are bad? When they're totally not a thing in our lives, for us to be needing to take some kind of political stance against. We throw in a token desexualized older white man and uh, some prisoner who the queen consults with and, and he's Middle Eastern also, I, or Indian. I guess I just don't really see why this guy who is being trusted around the princess and all that, like why he was locked up. And also this girl they're calling Dove, who early on, I thought this was a pretty compelling character. So I thought she was just going to be one and done in and out of a scene. But no, she is in love with the prince and she wants to rescue him as well. Oh, but she's just muffin girl to others. She's not royalty. So who is she to be hooking up with the prince? Again, we're seemingly forcing in this class system where it wasn't present for the previous generation. Now, typically there aren't any good white guys, but like I said, you got this older white gentleman who... Uh, well, they're gonna come back for him, right? No? And then they come across Willow Wark Davis reprising his role from the movie, playing the titular character who is a supporting character in the series bearing his name. He picks up on the Muffin Girl actually being a Laura Dunn, a mystical, all-powerful Mary Sue character who was a baby in the original movie further declarifying who exactly is the protagonist of the series. As I mentioned, there is not a lot in the way of plot. For three episodes, we never cut to the opposition side and see what the prince is into. If he's being tortured, who or what we're dealing with, and why we should be afraid. All we get is Willow prophesizing. This show feels strangely expensive cheap. Like, okay, we have costumes, some, and not a whole lot in the way of sets and thrilling set pieces, you know, mystical creature fights, but at least they go outdoors, as opposed to shooting in a green screen studio. And oddly enough, one of the more memorable character sequences in the original film, the brownies, these tiny, little tiny people that can like fit in your pocket, nowhere to be seen. Whoever the villain is, they've corrupted this guard who is in pursuit of Elora. Evil white guy, of course, and this actor has the deepest voice imaginable. And Willow concocts a potion or spell that just makes for a smoke bomb that allows the bad guys to escape with Elora so that we can have something to do 
do. Such as Alora slipping away, appearing to stumble forward in time, bumping into a couple of lesbians wearing 1800s gold rush garb, standing in bright sunlight, but our dispatch in this incident is never mentioned again. Then we have to confront them, and oh look, a character gets killed, but it's super minor. I suppose that's what most of these characters are here for, because do we really need half of them? We could have made so much more progress without a princess, her lover, and suitor. Now this show is from the demonic hellspawn of Lawrence Kasdan. And I've got to say, this guy has ruined everything he has touched. The Willow series on Disney Plus is laden with contemporary dialogue that does not fit a fantasy concept. This isn't a comedy, but it has too many characters playing the snarky whatever type. And episode 3 caps off with a horrific cover of Enter Sandman, at which point I'm contractually obligated to walk away. Now, I do like seeing Wark Davis here, and I think he's okay. I just wish he actually played a bigger part in his own series. And I respect the fact that Elora isn't really a Mary Sue. She doesn't have divine powers from the get-go. We actually see her spending a lot of time trying to do a simple spell, though it, it is boring. Again, I don't see the appeal in Disney Plus doing this show other than we have to have something to go up against these two titles and court all of our LGBTQ plus uh, oppressed allies along the way. Thank you for watching my son's YouTube station. It's not for everyone, but he tries. Maybe if you bought some merch below, he'll eventually get good at the YouTubing.